G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'm going to be running through some components and bits of kit that will definitely come in handy if you want to build your own backyard aquaponics system. So just before we get cracking folks, I thought I'd quickly mention that I'm only going to do a quick overview of the components in this clip today. Some of these components, I've actually got uh, full videos on either DIYs or explanations, and I've created a playlist to go along with this video, and you'll find the link down in the description, and it'll also pop up at the end for you guys who are patient enough to wait till then. Also suggest that if you're new to aquaponics that you click on that subscribe button down there, and then the bell icon once it appears, and that way YouTube will send you notifications whenever I upload any future component clips or maybe aquaponic design clips to the YouTube channel here. The best place to start, I think, is the fish tank itself. And for any of you folks who have been uh, wandering around the interwebs, uh, looking into building your own aquaponic system, you would have come across the caged square totes or IBCs that a lot of people use as their fish tanks. Uh, they're made from a high density polyethylene, uh, which is HDPE plastic, which is a food grade plastic. Their square shape also makes them easy to fit in uh, small little courtyard areas. And the cage that surrounds the bladder itself makes a great anchor point for attaching cladding to it to make it look a little bit more schmicko. And because these IBCs have a flat wall, you can get a little bit creative like Ben has and create a little bit of a viewing window out of perspex, just so your fish can keep an eye on what you're up to out there in the patch. You can also buy stock tanks and purpose-built aquaculture tanks made from HDPE or fiberglass if your budget stretches that far. There's a couple of local tank suppliers that do aquaculture tanks and I'll pop links down in the description for you folks in southeast Queensland or northern New South Wales who are looking for something a little bit above and beyond an IBC. Aquaculture tanks generally come in a one is to two or greater height to diameter ratio, which allows for better water circulation. These round tanks can also have windows fitted. They're a little bit fiddly because of their round shape, of course, but it is possible. And Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm here on YouTube has some fantastic examples over on his channel. So well worth popping over to have a bit of a gander. Some tanks are another large water holding tank that are common to a lot of backyard aquaponic system designs. They're basically a tank that sits at the lowest point of your aquaponic system and houses the pump that moves the water around to different components. Having it at the lowest point allows water from the grow beds and filters and whatnot to flow back into it via gravity, reducing power costs. Having a large sump means you can always expand the amount of grow beds you have on your system. And not only that, it can prolong the time between water top ups as water is consumed by the plants in the system. One of the biggest benefits to having a large sump tank with a pump housed inside there is it means you can have a constant level of water in your fish tank. So they've always got water no matter what happens, even if there's a blackout. And all this is thanks to a pretty nifty little piece of plumbing called a solids lifting outlet or SLO for short. So just to give you a bit of an example, we'll look at a basic slow in an IBC system. So the water rent is at the top of the fish tank, displacing some of the water at the base as well as fish solids into the bottom of the slow pipe. It then travels up the pipe and then out through the sidewall in the tank. The skyward facing port on the solids lifting outlet uh, allows air to enter in there so no siphon can be initiated basically draining the fish tank all the way down to the bottom. So in your backyard aquaponics system, I really do think it's a good idea to have some sort of solids filtration. Uh, don't worry, you're not taking all the nutrients out of the water, like some people would suggest. A lot of those nutrients are found suspended in the water itself. Those solids, if left to uh, accumulate in the grow beds, can actually turn anaerobic and cause all sorts of issues. It's happened to me here. Uh, you can end up with a nitrite spike, which in turn can actually um, put your fish's lives in danger. So I prefer to remove all those solids out of the system. Those solids don't have to go to waste though they can go out onto your veggie patch or around the base of your fruit trees or they can be added into an aerated mineralization tanks which makes the elements more available for the plants and added back into the system at a later date i'm not going to get into that in this clip here that'll be one further down the track so the two most common solids filters or settlers you'll see used in backyard aquaponic systems are the swirl or the radial flow settler now the radial flow settler actually outperforms the swirl filter by quite a margin so i thought what i'd do is just quickly run through its components and how it works so at the base of the filter you have a pipe that receives the water from the solids lifting outlet from the fish tank that's connected inside the filter to a standpipe that runs towards the top of the filter body and inside a stilling well 
The stilling well is a larger diameter pipe than the stand pipe and is generally about one half to two thirds the height of the filter itself. There's also an exit pipe that takes the clean water out to the next component in the system and in the base you'll find a drain fitting that runs through the wall and is fitted with a valve that can be opened when it's time to clean the solids from the base. It's pretty simple how they work. The water enters the filter via the pipe in the base and is redirected upwards through the standpipe. That standpipe discharges the water at the top of the stilling well that then redirects the flow downwards towards the main chamber of the filter itself. The water in the base isn't moving as fast, so the incoming water velocity decreases, allowing the solids to fall out of the water column and collect on the base of the filter for removal later. Another little DIY filter that comes in handy if you've got your pump in with your fish is called the canister filter. The fish solids enter the pump, they get macerated by the impeller, and they're turned into very fine particulate. Now, these canister filters are basically a vessel with something like a shade cloth in there. Water enters and filters out the solids and clean water comes out the top. They're very efficient and I've already got a clip posted to the channel on a DIY build if you want to check that out. It's also listed in that little playlist that I've created just for this video. Now another filter that is a must for every single aquaponics system is the biofilter. Uh, the biofilter is basically a place for the naturally occurring bacteria to colonize and it's these bacteria that process the ammonia and ammonium which is a waste product from the fish into fish friendly and plant available nitrates. And the most common biofilters you're going to see in a backyard aquaponic system are these things here, the media based grow beds. The media in there provides that place for the bacteria to colonize so they can process the waste and keep the system ticking over. You can also get standalone biofilters and we have one in our system. We have a moving bed bioreactor. We use a purpose made biomedia uh, for the bacteria to colonize and also add in a lot of oxygen so they can oxidize that ammonia and ammonium all the way through to plant available nitrates. Uh, and from there, the water can either flow out to a sump tank. It's nice and clean now and can be circulated through the system or it can go directly into a deep water culture or NFT hydroponic style of grow bed, which we'll cover in a minute. Uh, back to the other grow beds, the media grow beds. These guys can be filled with a variety of different materials. You can use uh, suitable rock, expanded shale, uh, the um, clay media that we use here, and even sand in some specialized systems. Grow beds that use the larger medium can be plumbed up a few different ways. They can be treated as an ebb and flow or flood and drain style bed or as a constant flow. Now the constant flow generally have a lot of oxygenated water flowing through there and then the water just is kept at a constant height the whole time. Now I prefer to use a flood and drain grow bed because that way I know the plants, roots and the bacteria are receiving a good amount of oxygen a couple of times an hour. And to drive the uh, flooding and draining event, I like to use a bell siphon and you'll find a clip in that playlist that not only shows you uh, how they work, a bit of an explanation, but also runs through a very reliable build that I've been using in my system for years. And now other sorts of grow beds, uh, there's a deep water culture grow bed which can be made out of a large trough. It basically has a raft either floating on its surface or suspended just above the surface. There are a load of holes in that raft and through those holes you put little neck cups and that allows the roots of the plants to uh, dangle down into the nutrient rich water that is slowly passing through the bed. Uh, another method of growing your plants is called nutrient film technique. This method is very popular with um, hydroponic green growers, lettuce growers and herb growers and that sort of thing. Uh, the plants are basically sitting in net pots and there's a thin film of water that travels over the top of the roots supplying nutrients. If the only plant growing systems you're using are the NFT or the deep water culture, you will need some form of biofiltration and when, that's when those um, moving bed bioreactors come into their own. Just um, tacked on after the solids filter and out of the way, processing all the waste for the fish, making a plan available. Now to move all this water around from the tanks to grow beds and filters and whatnot, we're going to need a pump. And the best little pumps for a backyard aquaponic system, I think, are the little magnetic drive pond and aquarium pumps. They're readily available around the world, relatively cheap, and they're designed to handle a small amount of solids um, such as fish poop and other bits and pieces that you'll find in a backyard aquaponics system. Now when it comes to sizing the pump for your system, it really does pay to have some idea of the layout of 
of your system in mind, mainly because uh, all the walls of the pipe, the water will be flowing through from the pump and all the little bends and elbows and whatnot, they are going to slow down the velocity of that water. Not only that, the how high you're pumping it will greatly affect uh, the flow rate of the water as well. And there's also another rule of thumb to keep in mind, and that is that the total volume of water in your fish tank needs to be changed over at least one and a half times an hour minimum. I prefer twice an hour, but one and a half should see you by. So once you factor in the turnover rate in the fish tank and also the flow loss due to friction and head height, it does pay you to um, oversize your pump a fair bit just to make sure that there is a complete and proper turnover of water in your system. So fish also require dissolved oxygen in the water, so air pumps are another crucial component, I think, for a reliable backyard aquaponics system. Now when it comes to sizing the air pump, there is a basic rule of thumb, and that is you want it to pump a minimum the entire volume of your fish tank every hour, so you know that the fish have plenty of dissolved oxygen, even on the warmest days, when the water doesn't tend to hold a lot. Another essential bit of kit is a backup air system. Now, they're going to come into play if there's ever a blackout. They'll be able to deliver oxygen to your fish to at least keep them alive until the power comes back on. Now, there's a couple of um, pumps that have lithium ion batteries in there. As Soon as the power turns out, they kick on and they can supply your fish with air for um, anywhere up to about 12 to 18 hours from the different models that I've seen. I've built a standalone 12 volt backup air supply. It's got a car battery that supplies the power, a relay that initiates a pump when the power goes off. And you can find a complete build clip for that down in the playlist linked below. Now a crucial bit of kit that a lot of people neglect when they first start out is a test kit. I think it's a must have. Now there's a commonly used test kit called the API freshwater test kit. It measures your pH, a low and a high range, ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. It comes into its own when you're cycling a system, uh, when you're trying to add ammonia sources in there and you want to wait until you see some nitrite appear and then the nitrate and then the nitrite and the ammonia drop and you know your system cycle. Very quick explanation. So I do hope that this um, clip has given you folks who are looking at starting your own aquaponics system some food for thought. And don't forget the little card that will pop up here at the end and the link in the description that will take you to a deeper dive on some of the components that I've mentioned in this clip here. If you have found this clip to be helpful and useful, it'd be fantastic if you could share it around to your friends and family on different social media networks. I really would appreciate it. Uh, helps the little channel grow a little bit more and share the information with other people out there. So before this wind blows me away, I really do need to thank those awesome folks over on Subscribestar, the YouTube membership page, and also those folks who are contributing via a couple of dollars here and there through the uh, PayPal system. Thank you very much to all of you. I do hope that you found the clip helpful and that your own gardens are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one.